All right, guys, continuing on with episode two of our Chad Reed One Last Ride tour here within Supercross the game number three. Last episode in Glendale was sketchy. The goon moments got the best of me. I don't even know how I managed to pull off the win, but it happened. We have the points lead. We have the red plate coming into Oakland, so it should be pretty entertaining, man. Hopefully, I can hold on to it. We're going to be doing the 30-second head start challenge, the heat race. We're just going to have fun with it and just ride as if it's a normal race. I don't want to be doing too many head starts and just be doing too much of the exact same. If I do a head start in the heat race, it's pretty much just the main event shortened down so that is the plan for today we're gonna hop into qualifying let's get in to the gameplay here from oakland now before i go any further guys i haven't seen this in the game yet and i think we just gotta take a moment to appreciate it Whenever I have the red plate, I like to come in and take a look at it and kind of just appreciate it on whatever bike we do have it on. I think it looks pretty fire on the Suzuki. I do find that Suzuki's look really, really good with the red plates. I, I don't even know why, they just do. And I think uh, this is a perfect example. Hopefully the man CR22 can end off his one last ride tour with that red plate. That would be sweet. A little thumbnail action, man. Holy, that'd be pretty. Oh, oh, if that's a thumbnail, easy piece of cake. Let's go. Holy, it locks you into autopilot for a long, long time here in Oakland. Now, I have done a lot of Oakland here on the channel recently. It is a really, really fun track. So doing this 30 second head start, it might actually, it might play out pretty good in the long run. We'll have to see. I know I definitely have some lines here on Oakland that I can bust out, or I guess that Reed can bust out, and uh, we should have a few seconds per lap over our competitors. Now, if you guys do enjoy at any point in time, you guys already know, smash that thumbs up button for me. The support has been unreal on the channel recently, guys. Let's see if we can keep that going and show your love for... CR22. Smash that thumbs up button for me. Question of the video. You guys know I love doing these. Let me know in the comments below which bike did you like the best when Chad Reed was on it? Was it his, you know, his 252 stroke, his YZ 252 stroke back when he was on Hondas? Did you like that CR22? Do you like it when he's here on the JGR team? What about his Husky? What about his new KTM? Which Chad Reed bike is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Me personally, I don't think anything beats the 252 stroke days, man. The YZ 252 stroke days, I don't think anything beats it. When Reedy was in his prime, would you guys consider that being like Reedy in his prime? Back when two strokes were just kind of phasing out of the Supercross scene in the pro scene. I feel like that's when Reedy was in his prime, but I could obviously be completely wrong. He's obviously not in his prime right now. He's having a ton of fun with the sport, setting crazy records and stuff like that for, for most main events entered and stuff like that, but uh, definitely not at the tip top of this game going for main event wins or anything by any means. Like, we watch Reed win LCQs this year, so I think it is cool that he's doing like one last ride. Oh man, that's a big line. I think it is cool. It's a really, really cool thing. And uh, it's kind of a bummer that uh, with everything that's going on in the world, it's kind of been cut short at the at this point. And I do know Reed is anxious to get out there and get riding. So uh, we will see him lining up if they do resume racing. And I need to look it up. It's Arizona, right? I could be completely wrong. And you guys will probably correct me in the comments, but... Uh, yeah, if you guys are new around here, you guys already know, a subscribe. That button's down there. Turn on those post notifications. Join the Goon Army, guys. We are uploading a ton of content every single day here on the channel. I'm trying to bring back the streams, trying to do some multiplayer streams with you guys and get you guys more involved. I'm always interactive over on Discord, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to get involved, check out the links in the description. I'm probably the most active over on Discord. You can catch me at random times over on Discord just 
hanging out, talking about random things with the goon army. So join the Discord. That's it for qualifying, man. I was just getting sketchy, and uh, I know Oakland pr pretty well. Like I was saying, we got about two seconds, more than two seconds a lap on these guys. So let's get into that heat race. And I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch it up. Rather than just doing the heat race as normal, I know I said that's what we were going to do, but I'm gonna do it in helmet cam. Why not do it in helmet cam? That makes it a little more entertaining. It brings you guys some different gameplay rather than just, I mean, more of the same gameplay. So let's do it on that inside gate in helmet cam. Let's see if I can get off to a good start. Oh, we're wheeling. We're getting sketchy already here in helmet cam. Got that whole shot. That is what I needed. And we are off to the races here in Oakland. See if I can bust out this triple. It was sketchy, but it worked. Sketchy, but it worked. And I think that's the motto around here. Through the finish line for the first time, and we are smooth sailing so far. On to what is officially lap number one, in my opinion. Messed up this rhythm. Try and maybe salvage a bounce. Case lifeline. It's not gonna work. Triple. Let's see if we can up toss it over that triple. Let's go, man. The helmet cam flow here in Oakland. So far, so good. Off to a killer start in this heat race. But over the wall, this jump. I always want to time it really, really good, but I always over jump it or case it. And let's be real, I never time it good. Same with this section, man. Why is it eating me alive? It's usually so easy to double triple through there same with here I haven't hit this line clean once maybe I do need to work on a Chad Reed setup his bike does feel a little soft through the whoops it wants to uh, I guess that wouldn't be soft it feels stiff maybe not stiff in the whoops because it's just like too soft it's almost too soft where it absorbs too much of the bounce from the whoops and then it starts bouncing you around even more same with some of these rhythms I just feel like getting on the gas and trying to uh, preload Reedy doesn't feel like he's got a gnarly preload pop in those sections so I don't know maybe bike setup is key and uh, running the stock setup might get the best of me here in this career because <laughs> I never touch the setup and you guys know that I guess if I hit this lip double triple there we go and I gotta remember, I am in helmet cam, so you gotta subtract like 50% of my speed from the equation because I struggle in helmet cam. But we got a minute and a half left. It's actually going, oh, I don't know what the bike just did. I don't know what it just did there, but this is actually going a lot better than what I expected. There we go, man. Finally a clean line through there. Oh, bog central coming out of that corner. Toss it up and over the supercross triple land on the gas early in that corner through the whoops that's what i'm talking about man that is what i'm talking about other than ricky johnson being right on my tail things are actually going pretty good no complaints in this heat race 50 seconds on the clock and a few laps left to just stay smooth and consistent all right that is the goal probably best to just double double through there if i can't hit the triple line probably the way to do it there we go. I need to shift up, man. I can't be stuck in second gear the whole time. That's my issue. <laughs> Two laps to go. Oh, I thought I was getting reset there, but hopefully smooth sailing to this win. Scrub and oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Up and over the finish line for one last time in this heat race. Let's see if I can beat my one minute lap time all right so triple up and over get that bounce that is crucial through there land super cross scrub through there scrub a dub dub into this corner oh my goodness i'm getting sketchy and that is it lap down the drain just like that okay <laughs> close but no cigar 101 for that lap time taking that heat race win it's main event time man i was on rails not as quick as in qualifying but of course that helmet cam came into play and uh, slowed me down a little bit but one minute for that lap time 
We're golden. And the man Chad Reed once again walking out for opening ceremonies. He's gonna wave to the crowd. The crowd loves him. The crowd is roaring, man. Just listen to him. They're going nuts for the man CR22. Look at him. The legend himself. So I don't think our gate pick really matters other than trying to avoid that tough block obstacle course. Now one thing that you guys did mention in my two stroke career was this right here you can actually come in check out qualifying check out the heat race results check out the lcq results and that's actually pretty cool if you want to see who's making it in to that main event you can go ahead and just look at these results and figure it out it would be nice if you could tab over one more to the main event and it listed all the riders that qualified but yeah this screen it's pretty cool i do wish that it just threw this at you automatically i wish uh, that you didn't have to come in and click sessions in order to see that but that's besides the fact it is time to get sendy here in oakland the 30 second head start challenge is of course about to go down so these guys are going to attack the track when that timer hits nine minutes and 30 seconds we are going to go and see if we can make something happen get into that oakland flow and see if we can catch up to these guys within the first few laps these first few laps are going to be crucial for the remaining of the series honestly the first few laps of the main event are probably going to be the most important 9 30 on that clock oh no i'm just gonna wait right now and uh say that that's my five second penalty because that is uh that's unfortunate man going down there right off the get-go oh no it's like a 35 second head start going to these guys i'm gonna have to find that oakland flow and definitely see if i can just shred at this point and try and make this comeback happen 25 seconds to barsha right now oh i got my work cut out for me that is for sure so up on to lap number two 24 seconds down from barsha now 101 is my quickest lap so far that lap was not perfect about a second slower than my fast lap so let's see what i can do we got a lot of time to make up on these guys a lot of racing left though so obviously i'm not too concerned at this point and i gained about i want to say like eight seconds on the back of the field there that lap last time i came through there the head start or the uh the lead was about 38 seconds or so and now it was down to like in the 20 second range somewhere so so far so good and i think it's just gonna come down to how smooth i can be all moto long obviously that crash right off the start is going to cost me all right it is and uh, if i keep messing up this section missing the triple triple through there oh man we are in for a brutal result that is for sure i gained six seconds on barsha that lap though so that is that is huge that's a lot of time Let's see if i can still bust out this triple oh man i didn't have the perfect drive when i landed that double but it still worked and over the supercross triple we are flowing at this point with five basically six minutes left on the clock i am about i think it said 15 seconds from the leader which i've gained a ton of time cut away at that lead by a ton already and we're not even at the halfway point i've only done like three four laps i think this is my fourth lap so the progress is happening guys i think it's only a matter of time can cr22 hold on to that red plate that is the main question we got that red plate we got that points lead and you know he's hungry to hold on to it the leaders are like just hitting the finish line now so to put that into perspective for you guys this is how long it's going to take me to get up and get to the finish line that's how far behind we are at this point in this race so when i was hitting that wall jump the leaders were hitting the finish line and i just hit the finish line there the timer does say 11 seconds behind justin barsha so that's not actually too too bad especially with how much racing we do have left here in oakland so let's see if we can get stewart behind us stewart after having an amazing result in the first episode he is uh he's struggling the man is struggling out here at the back of the pack what did i just witness did you guys just witness what i just witnessed 
Was that Osborne? Someone just sent it back on the track across that berm. Like, I witnessed someone fly to the moon and back coming into that whoop section. I don't know what just happened. I have a lot of questions, but they won't be answered until I can see that replay. I am shook. <laughs> I don't know what just went down. I think it was Osborne because I just saw like a blur of yellow flying through the air. That was that was gnarly, man. I'm into the mix. Savachi probably going to get him behind me and we can set our sights on the one and only multiplayer hero Vince Freeze, man. Multiplayer idol, I guess. Every multiplayer rider looks up to this guy right here. Vince Freeze. They seem to love him <laughs> as he... <laughs> he almost went down there, man. Should I Vince freeze him? Oh Man, there we go. That's what I'm talking about taste of his own medicine Right around Stuart Chisholm was off track the AI are getting sketchy, but that is expected That is expected man into the mix now with oh ET3 <laughs> As we make contact there, I went for a completely different line and just smacked him. The legend Cole Seeley. Miss having him in the sport. Always such a humble dude. And obviously he's out there doing his own thing now. Kind of, uh, after he got injured there, had that crazy, I believe it was like a back injury. Kind of, uh, took time off. Now he's struggling to get bikes. Moved from Honda to KTM, I think it's crazy. Someone like Sealy, who's been on Honda for how many years? Dedicated to Honda for pretty much as long as I can remember. Like, I do not remember Sealy on a different bike other than Honda. And here he is in 2020 trying to get new bikes. And he has to go out and go on a KTM because it was his cheapest option. Like, take that in, guys. If I was, like... If I was like uh, PR at Honda, I would be like, yo, we gotta get this guy a bike. The amount of Instagram followers he has, the amount of YouTube publicity he's getting here and there, like, I don't see why you would just drop him. I'm assuming nothing has happened. Like, Sealy wouldn't do anything to burn those bridges with the Honda guys. So I think it's just crazy. Like, I'm not even talking like a, you know, a done up. $40,000 bike like I'm talking just hook him up with a stock bike. You know what I mean? Like let him do the mods if he wants But uh, at least hook him up with a bike like you would think after having him on your team for that long That many years you would want to keep him dedicated to your machine and on Honda for as long as you could just because like he's been loyal to the brand and uh, the publicity that could come from it like obviously he's not out there racing anymore, but man He's doing YouTube, he's doing Instagram, like, his YouTube channel is popping, and, uh, that's like, say, you know, 50,000 new faces that don't necessarily watch Supercross as it is, right? So, maybe those people are only on YouTube, and it could gain them even more publicity. So, I think it's just crazy to see Sealy on KTM at this point, and, uh, not on Honda. Which actually brings me to the Reed thing. I wonder what's going on there, man. Is KTM hooking these guys up? Because even Reed, Reed making the switch. What's going on behind the scenes? What's happening that we don't know about, am I right? But with that little rant under my belt, guys, we got about two laps left in this race. I'm in P2. I worked my way through the whole entire field, except Cooper Webb, while talking about uh, Cole Seeley there. We made a ton of passes, and it was just like super easy too like i was just flowing riding my own race and uh oakland the 30 second head start challenge i think it's gonna happen guys i think it is double through here we're into the lead past the man web just like that i don't think i could have asked for an easier race honestly no real crazy moments or anything and uh even with that crash at the start Still managed to get up and get into that lead. You guys could say that uh, I didn't wait a full five seconds at the start, and you're probably right. But, man, I got the short end of the stick there. 
That was just bad timing. Don't even know where I'm really gaining a ton of speed or a ton of time on these guys. I think it's just the flow. The Oakland flow that I'm keeping alive seems to gain me a bunch of time. Because I think for the most part, we're all hitting fairly similar lines. Maybe not through here though. When I do get that double triple clean, it is quick. It's a quick line. Get through here, up, 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 jump up, on, off. All right, we can just wait for a little bit. We can wait. <laughs> that is it, guys. That was my crash penalty right there, all right? P1 in Oakland, just as I expected. 35 second head start is going to go down in the next episode. I'm not prepared for that one. Was that my fastest lap of the night? 58.982, not too shabby, man. Taking that win once again. I think it's just gonna get even crazier from here on out. I didn't expect to win here today in Oakland, but now that we're doing the 35 second head start, I think this may be the last win we get for this seven round championship. That's it, that's all. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to smash that thumbs up button for me, throw any comments down below. And the man CR22 continues on his one last ride journey with that W and the next stop is Minneapolis. I will see you guys all then. Peace out.